and welcome to the Knit and Grace podcast. Let's talk about knitwear marketing and hype. Hello and welcome or welcome back if you're a returning viewer. If you are new here, my name is Mia and I am the maker behind Knit and Grace. And today I bring you a knit and chat episode of the podcast. So in these knit and chats, we talk about various subjects, whether it's one that has come up in the comments, one that kind of has come to me through life. Um, and sometimes like the one today, it is one that comes out as a result of my recent making so in terms of um, some housekeeping for today's episode, I am filming on my lunch break, so I am a little bit on time, and there is some construction that has been going on on and off over the past couple of weeks in front of my house, and so there might be some construction noise that I will try to edit out in post-production. But um, that is kind of the warning to you all, as I'm sure you can probably hear that rumble right now <laughs> as a school bus goes by of any background noise that you might hear that I will, of course, try to edit um, in post-production. So uh, I do have some notes, although these tend to be a little bit more informal and I just kind of like to speak off the cuff. And I do want to share with you all two things before we get started. So the first thing that I am going to share with you all is what I will be working on. So what I am working on are a pair of vanilla socks in Zauberball Crazy in the color, I think it's called Sternschnepf, if I remember correctly. I will insert the name and number below, but it essentially the English translation of the color is Shooting Star. And I picked this up recently on our travels down to South Carolina when we went to see our grandparents because I thought that this color really reminded me a lot of spring. So definitely wanted to work on that. And I do have a stitch marker so that we can know how much progress I make on this today. And then the second item of housekeeping to share with you all is what I'm wearing today. And so what I'm wearing is if you watched the last episode of the podcast, I think you will already know where this is going is my striped pipe sweater. And so um, hopefully by the time I get this up, because I am filming this about two weeks before I plan on getting it up, I will have taken finished object pictures and insert them here for you all to see. But this is the Stripe Pipe by Veronica Lindbergh. And if you watched my most recent podcast episode, I did feature this as a finished item. So you'll actually be able to see those FO pictures finally. And then also you will know that I had some controversial thoughts about the pattern that kind of got me thinking about knitwear um, marketing in general, but also sort of hype behind different patterns and kind of how we're influenced to knit different patterns and why. And so that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you all about today. And since this is the sweater that inspired it all, I thought that I would wear it for today's podcast. So um, as I will, again, I will link you to last month's podcast, um, so that you can see that, or I guess it was two weeks ago, but this month's podcast, so that you could see where I talked about this. But in terms of the fit, as I did mention in the podcast, and there are timestamps, so you can go specifically just to the stripe pipe portion, I did mention that the sweater actually fits me well. It just could have definitely fit me a little bit better um, if there had been some additional sort of shaping. So it really actually does fit me really well. I got the look and feel that I was looking for in a sweater. So I'm actually happy about that. 
And it's just like an oversized boxy, super lightweight sweater that I can hopefully wear all spring long. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up my knitting needles and go ahead and start knitting as always uh, with all of my episodes, but especially with this knit and chat episode, since we are knitting together, let me know what you are working on while we are knitting. And actually, I should probably go grab my water because I can definitely feel myself getting a little bit of cotton mouth right now. <laughs> So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, we are back and we are hydrated and we will start knitting. Um, I can't really sit any further back, so I'll try to prop my arms up so that you all can sort of see me work on my stitches as I go along. But in terms of today's knit and chat, and so I alluded to this in my last podcast, as I mentioned, and I probably should stop saying that because I sound like a broken record, but I alluded to the fact that, you know, part of the reason that I wanted to knit the sweater, I, I honestly did want sort of that oversized boxy top down drop shoulder sweater. I whenever I can try to introduce some color into my wardrobe, but specifically usually around my spring and summer wardrobe, not so much my fall and winter wardrobe. Those are very much my neutrals and my goals. But in the spring and the summer, I do like to introduce some color into my wardrobe and I wanted to introduce a little bit more color when choosing this pattern. And so that is where some of the other colors that maybe you don't see me knit as much have come into play here in terms of this blue green, um, this purple. While I do knit with purple, I don't usually do like the bluish cool tone purples. I tend to do more uh, warm tone colors. And so I just wanted to kind of play with color and figure out, you know, is it some, you know, are there other colors that I can incorporate into my wardrobe that will fit overall and kind of, you know, give me that little bit of a fix. Um, as you all know, I believe pink is a neutral, so I knit with a lot of pink. Uh, so I did incorporate pink into this sweater. And, you know, you see my my brown that I love, you know, and my, my champagne, which I love as well. So, you know, I didn't go too far out of the box when it came to choosing the colors for the sweater. But, you know, it kept popping up. Um, you know, there are so many podcasters that are knitting this sweater, at least podcasters that I watch that are knitting this sweater. And every so often, you know, through the Instagram algorithm, you just see, you know, the sweater is everywhere. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about the hype and kind of, you know, sort of talking about how we get influenced into making different things. And of course, the Instagram algorithm, as we know, is a fickle, fickle thing. It's always changing. Is it actually showing us what we want to see? Is it, you know, maybe not showing us other folks, um, you know, as a person of color? I definitely can see this as someone in a, you know, more larger body. I can definitely see this, like, in terms of what and who I see coming across my Instagram feed that are people that are I'm not following. Um, and, and yeah, you know, our life is kind of really ruled by these algorithms. And if you don't try to go out of your way to try to seek something else out, that is what is shown to you. And, you know, in that same vein, I think that, and rightfully so, because knitwear designers have to market to people and they have to make sure that their marketing is going to get their items seen. Sometimes I feel like knitwear designers feed into this a little bit, you know, in terms of the types of photography, the types of designs that they're, you know, designing. And of course, you know, there are trends. So obviously everyone wants to be on trend. It's not necessarily keeping up with the trends. It's just maybe sometimes, you know, the way that things are being marketed to us definitely 
can be a little prescriptive, right? Because you want to make sure that your pattern does well. And, you know, if you're a knitwear designer and that's how you have chosen to make a living, you need to make a living. So I don't um, kind of fault them for that. But, you know, like anyone else, and I think if you followed me for a while, you definitely know I am very easily influenced. And that is something that um, I kind of started to work through in last year. And I think you saw that a lot in my knitting just overall the year, you know, I was a lot more intentional with what I was making. Um, and then that's really front and center of my goal for this year is just intentionality and you know, bringing the slowness back into my craft and bringing more intentionality into my craft in general and not giving in to the hype and the marketing. And, you know, in terms of the marketing, it can be any different thing. So with this particular pattern, aside from the hype itself, you know, I kind of did, this is a designer that I, I've never knit any of their designs before. And I have followed them on YouTube or watched a few, you know, videos on YouTube. And I think that she does a very, very good job at YouTube marketing, if we're completely honest. And so, you know, based on that, you know, I think based on a designer's pages, based on what they're putting out, based on all of these things, we kind of get an idea of what we think a designer is, right? And so I think that sometimes it's just very easy to just look on the surface to see like, okay, this is how this designer is portraying themselves. So this is who they are. This is how their designs are. And this is either going to appeal to me or it's not. And sometimes we forget to take that extra step into really looking a little further, digging a little deeper, looking under the hood, if you will, to see if maybe what the, the, image that's being put out there is factual or what you think to be, you know, not necessarily factual, but, um, I, you know, I don't think that anyone is lying when they put out, you know, their designs or any information, but like, if it's true to what you're perceiving is what I should say, you know? So, um, I think that that's kind of part of it too, right? Where it's like, it's not just giving into the marketing aspect of it and the hype of a pattern, but it's also just maybe taking a little bit of extra time to look under the hood. Like, what are these, the other patterns that this designer has released look like? Um, what are other people saying about their other patterns? Is this a situation where only one pattern is popular and maybe not so much their other patterns because people are having issues with it? You know, is there, any number of things like that that have to do with a designer and their designs and their specific pattern. Then there is the marketing aspect of it, right? And trying to figure out when I see something, um, whether it's the designer putting out an image or another maker putting out an image, because 100%, you know, even myself, I'm only going to put out images that I think are aesthetically pleasing or that are aesthetically pleasing to me. I am definitely going to... Um, stage things in a very specific way because that's also what's going to get people to view my content, right? And that's also how I'm going to build community. So it's not just, you know, yes, you build community through those interactions with people, but you can't build community if people aren't coming to you and interacting with you to begin with, right? So it's kind of that double-edged sword where you have to put out things that are appealing in order for people to come to you in order for you to build that community. So again, do not fault anyone for their marketing, do not fault anyone for anything like that, but it's just kind of like taking that step back when I'm choosing a pattern and kind of trying to decide like what is it that is drawing me to this pattern, right? And so now we're just talking about marketing in general and kind of like me be my conscious decision of wanting to be more intentional, be more um, conscious consumer. And I feel like this knit and chat is very rambly. We'll see if it ever makes the light of day. If it does, hopefully you're following along. But 
In terms of, you know, marketing right now, what we see is a lot of skinny girl in an oversized sweater. And that is the marketing that's being pushed to us over and over, you know, on all social media platforms and, you know, kind of, you know, for those of us that don't fit that, you might be skinny, you might not be white, <laughs> you might be, you know, skinny, you might not like to wear oversized things, you might be in a larger body, and maybe oversized things don't necessarily look as good on you. And so that's one thing too, that I've, you know, sort of, as I go through my journey of like, making sure I'm picking the right designers and whether a project is size inclusive or shape inclusive and all of that is, you know, a design does not need to fit or have the same amount of ease across the entire size range to necessarily be size inclusive. Now, what I will say, the size, the the pattern needs to look the same or very similar across the entire size range and fit well and the same across every size in the size range to be size inclusive. But personally, and again, this is just a personal opinion, I don't think that 20 inches of positive ease looks good on a someone with a larger body. And this is myself, you know, I don't think it looks like it looks good on me. I think it makes me look frumpy. I think it makes me look like I'm being dressed in my, you know, in my dad's clothing. And so I don't tend to knit patterns with as much positive ease based on my bust circumference of 46 inches. I typically tend to knit more in that like four, maybe six inch range of positive ease because that's where I think that something can look oversized without making me look dumpy or without making me look sloppy. Because that is one thing I think that Unfortunately, you know, an oversized sweater is going to look a lot different on a skinny body than it is on a large body. And so, you know, the way that I like to wear my clothing and still look oversized and still achieve for all intents and purposes, a very similar look um, is going to be a lot different than someone who, let's say, has, you know, a 32 inch bust. So, yeah, so that's kind of like the my sort of little bit of size inclusivity and it is getting a little dark here because it looks like we're about to get a little bit of rain. But back to the marketing, I really want to focus on what is it about the design or the picture or the post or whatever it is that is appealing to me and and start there. So is this picture appealing to me because it's a skinny person in an oversized sweater? Is this picture appealing to me because of the setting of the photo? It, do, do I love the nature that the photo is in? Do I love, you know, the way that the person has staged the photo? Am I being attracted to the staging itself? Um, am I attracted to the color of the garment? maybe not the actual garment. Um, you know, so what is it about this picture that is actually drawing me in besides just the design? You know, is it a work in progress photo in a coffee shop and I haven't had a coffee date with my friends in a long time. And so that's what's, you know, that nostalgia or that, that need to connect with my friends is what's pulling me to that picture. So what is it about that picture and that potentially pattern that is calling me in? So that's where I really want to start is what is it about this image that is drawing me in? And then from there, I can decide, is it the specific pattern that I want? Is it the fact that it's being marketed to me a lot that is kind of like bringing it to the forefront? Or is there something else that this picture is kind of fulfilling for me? So is it because I want to go for a hike? Is it because I want to meet up with a friend for coffee? Is it because I just love the way that the picture is staged and I want to kind of think about that for my own, you know, sort of photography skills and my own skill set? So kind of like think about it from there. And then ultimately, 
in or is it the styling right sometimes it's not even the sweater that we are drawn to or whatever the item is it's the other items of clothing that the person is wearing you know and then you kind of like and especially me i think of my um items more and more as outfits than i do as individual items um and i think i started really doing that in probably like 2022 definitely got much stronger in 2023 where you know i've even featured videos here on the channel where i show full outfit videos like i'm gonna knit and sew an entire outfit top to bottom so what is it about that picture that is drawing me and so what is it that i'm going to do with that and ultimately if it is the pattern that i want or the pattern that is drawing me in then let's go ahead and do that research you know is the designer someone that aligns with my sort of ethics is this design one that's going to look good on my body because even if let's say um you know a designer is you know knitting for all sizes is that actual shape going to suit my body um are there other large makers or mid-size makers that are making the same design what does it look like on them and then lastly and more importantly you know when it comes to just wanting to decrease my consumption in general is um is there a pattern that i already own that's in my pattern library that i as a fairly advanced knitter can take and modify to get the look and feel that i am looking for so you know these are just kind of a few things that I've been thinking about when it comes to knitwear um, marketing and the hype behind certain patterns. And again, I, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not kind of trashing this pattern. I think it's a very good pattern for a very new beginner who really just needs someone to hold their hands every step of the way. Um, and I think that the pattern served a purpose. I definitely you know, sort of it got my wheels thinking about other things um, in terms of my making journey. Um, ultimately, I love the sweater. I have no issues with the sweater, um, you know, and again, it still fits me very well. It could have fit me a tiny bit better. Yes, but I think it fit me. It fits me a heck of a lot better than if I bought it in a store. So which I think is the, the primary thing for a lot of us, right, is just a store bought sweater is never going to fit you as well as a knit, knitted sweater if you're making, you know, modifications for your body, even if just minor ones. So it just got me thinking and it's something that, you know, I did have some conversations with some of my friends, um, both designers and non-designers and kind of, you know, that mindset that we want to go into 2024 with. Of, I think a lot of us want to go into 2024 just being a little bit more intentional about our decisions. And so, you know, um, I don't only want to be intentional about my yarn choices i want to be intentional about the patterns that i'm knitting the pieces that i'm bringing into my wardrobe and ultimately the designers that i'm supporting as well so um i hope that this all made sense first of all uh, um if you are seeing this then i thought it did when i was editing it um and i hope that it resonated with you um you know let me know what you think about um you know kind of the marketing and hype behind certain patterns have you fallen into the hype trap ever before with a pattern have you ever been burned by a pattern i think that that, that was like the biggest thing right that i want to talk about with this is like yes i definitely fell into the hype with a pattern but luckily i wasn't burned <laughs> You know, I still came out of it with a really nice sweater that I enjoy wearing and I will probably wear for years to come. Um, but yeah, just let me know what you think about the subject. Anything that you would like to add to the conversation, um, leave me those comments in the comments down below and we can continue the conversation. Um, and yeah, I think with that, I'll probably show you where... I have 
left off. I'll try to go ahead and finish this. Oh, I don't have to finish the, the round, but I'll show you how much I got done in the 20 or so minutes that we have been chatting. So this is the marker from when we first started and we've gotten, I think a solid inch in. Um, let's see how many rounds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 rounds we've gotten completed. Um, but yeah, I hope that you enjoyed spending some time knitting with me today. Uh, of course, again, please share all of your sort of thoughts on the subject in the comments down below. Please be sure to do all of the podcasty things. There are various ways for you to support me and my channel in the description, as well as just subscribing and hitting that bell icon so you're notified every time I post a video, as well as liking and commenting on all of my videos. But until then, or I should say until next week when I will see you for the monthly podcast episode, uh, please be sure to take care of yourselves, your loved one, and each other. And I'll see you next time. Bye.